What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Monday Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, we talk about the topics that happened over the last week relating to the scale world of RCs. If you're familiar with the show and enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, or if you want to see these every Monday. Last week, we had a handful of topics, so let's jump right into them. Last week was probably the busiest week in the RC car stand world that I've ever seen with two new releases. We'll cover RPMs first. Theirs is a pivoting top section with foldable arms that allow you to kind of customize it to exactly what kind of car you're using. I think that it's probably more so aimed towards racers and things like that, but it looks like it might be possible to adapt it to something like a solid axle scale rig or something along those lines. And the retail on it is only 22 bucks. Pretty surprising for what it looks like you get. They're calling this car stand the Pit Pro Extreme and it lists that it's compatible with 1 12th to 1 8th scale vehicles. The top portion of the stand rotates 360 degrees and you can rotate the whole thing 45 degrees downwards. So it should give you a nice angle to work on or show whatever you're trying to do. I'm actually looking at this because I think I could use it on the bench, especially for video work, being able to place the car exactly how I want it to get a good camera angle on something. It's just fully adjustable enough that I think this thing could really be quite handy. So as far as car stand releases go, this one looks pretty good. However, the next one is from Team Losi Racing and theirs is a foam block style stand. Now I use foam block style stands. I use the Crawler Innovation cell block and I find that extremely handy and I actually have probably a dozen of them. But the Team Losi one, it incorporates a front shock holding system so you can use it to help lead your shocks, rebuild your shocks, or just take them off and hold them while you're working on the car, something along those lines. But at the same time, they're charging $19 for this foam block style stand versus $22 for RPM's fully adjustable Pit Pro Extreme. The Crawler Innovation stand that I normally use is half the price of this as well. So I don't see this foam stand from Team Losi really being all that great of a value or all that great of a release. I do see that they have integrated this removable front shock holding setup, which isn't a terrible idea, I kinda like it. However, I don't think that that detail really makes sense as far as the extra cost added to this piece. Along with that foam car stand release, they also released a $9 brush. It's basically just a fine and coarse brush to you know clean off your car or whatever it is. I use paint brushes for this same type of situation. I think that you could probably find a better deal on brushes as well. I don't think that Losi really nailed it with these two releases. But jumping back to a positive note, new from Tamaya, you can buy ready to run dancing riders in two different colors. This should make everybody happy in case you didn't want to take the effort to build your own dancing rider. Now you can buy one ready to run, pull it out of the box and have as much fun as you've ever had in your life. Look into them. Links in the description below. A number of weeks back, I talked about the PowerShift RC Technologies Dead Man switch, and I actually installed that in one of my rigs before Axial Fest. Now, PowerShift also released this last week a simple, just basic LED light setup for the Vanquish VS410 Origin set. Now, the VS410 uses a 10 millimeter front LED for the headlights and a five millimeter setup for the rear. PowerShift put together a simple setup where you can choose several different colors for the headlights, such as a warm white, cool white, or even a custom green color that they offered as well. I picked this kit up to do a little video just showing how simple the installation of it's going to be. Look for that in the future and you can find a link to that product in the description below. So that's pretty much it for actual news topics over the last week. However, there is some more big news and that is that Matt from Scale Builders Guild and myself have decided on a new series that we're going to do. It's going to be coming at the very beginning of September. It's not going to be a budget build, but Matt and I both couldn't be more excited about this new series. We've been talking about it constantly, trying to figure out exactly all the details about it. We're pretty much nailed down. I'm so excited to let everybody know what it's going to be, but I think both of us are going to keep it under wraps until the very first video is released on September 5th. So if you enjoyed the budget build, this one should be even more fun to watch. I'll put a link to, in the description below to Matt's channel, as well as a link to the Honcho budget build playlist. And again, the first video for the series will be launched on September 5th. 
Now let's jump into this week's social media questions from the posts that I made earlier today. So we'll start with some of the questions from Instagram. What do you think of Castle's crawler combos? Castle's crawler combos, actually they think they have several and it depends on what ESC or motor you want. I've ran, I believe the 2250 and the 3800. I do wish that they had some KV ratings on their 1406 motors that were more close to that 3100 to 3300, but the 2850 is actually pretty good as well. The Mamba X ESC is one of my favorites right now. I love the tuning and I love the adjustability on that ESC. So I think that their crawler combos, especially for the value, really smart buys. If you haven't tried them before, probably worth a look the next time you're shopping. Next question is, will the Ripper fit on the VS410 or are they going to come out with one for the VS410? The Ripper will not fit on the VS410 and for right now, there is not a plan for a VS410 Ripper option. The Ripper project was made for an Axial Fest project. It wasn't something that was really being developed for a long-term product or anything like that. It was just a one-time thing that we were going to do, turned into be making several of them. But for right now, no immediate plans to jump into a VS410 version. Next question is, where's a good place to get an assortment of screws and nuts? Now, k, &K Hardware has got assortments of screws and nuts. A Main Hobbies, I believe, carries a number of different things and options depending on really what you mean by an assortment. Rather than buying just a screw kit for a vehicle, I would probably recommend stocking up on all of the sizes of screws just to allow yourself to have just that little fine tuning that you need when you're building a custom rig, especially. I also used to get hardware from a company called Screw Loose Hex Hardware. Not sure how much they're doing or not anymore, but I always had good luck with them as well. What are your thoughts about the Hot Racing OD gears for the SCX-10 II? I actually don't know. I've never ran them myself. I do like running an overdrive setup. I run it specifically with my Vanquish portals under my carnivore chassis. I think it's a lot of fun. However, I'm not sure how different the ratio really is with the hot racing one. If I'm not mistaken, I think that it's just like one tooth different on the pinion or something along those lines. Not really sure. I don't know the longevity of it. Next question is, what is your preferred tires? Do they vary from trail to trail? My preferred tire really doesn't change from trail to trail because I usually try and run on as much rock as possible. There is situations where I am running in, you know, dirt trails and things like that, but not necessarily something that I'm varying my tire for. Honestly, a lot of the times I pick my tire based on the style of the build that I'm going after. I'm a big fan of the Proline crawlers because I like the full-size BFG crawlers. So I run those in several situations. I've also run different all-terrain style tires because I felt that that fit the look or the style of the build that I was going for more. So in all honesty, I, you know, I do have tires that I feel work really well. And as long as they fit the style of the truck that I'm building, that's what I use. Next question is, when are you going to film the TRX4 Sport? hopefully soon. I am waiting on the power system for that and I've been busy as well, but as soon as I get the power system for that, I'll get it in there, film the installation of that, and then definitely looking forward to filming running that TRX4 Sport in the mud. If you're not familiar with that build, I took the TRX4 Sport, threw the Traxxas lift kit on it, as well as the J Concepts 2.6 Fling King tires and wheels. It's a rowdy looking truck, and I'm looking forward to throwing it in the mud. The next question is, more budget builds? Not right now. This question says, what body, Lexan or hard, would you like to see replicate? It's actually a really good question. It's always a hard one. You know, the Scout body is the one that I like the most and just did it with the Vanquish VS410. After that, you know, I'm a fan of rigs that I see on the trails a lot in the real world, meaning, you know, Broncos, Jeeps, things like that, scouts a little bit. Beyond that, you know, it's those are the ones that I see often and those are the ones that I like. And then I like things like Chevy K10s or C10s and uh, different rigs along those lines. So honestly, for the trucks and vehicles that I like, they've kind of been done pretty well. If anything, if I was going to be super selfish and say what I wanted, it would be having bodies or panels available that are more buggy style, like off-road King the Hammer style buggies, because those usually use narrowed or pinched hoods and things like that. Things that you would have to take a Lexan body that may be available for a normal SCX-10 and you'd have to cut it to try and make it look right. 
which just really isn't that feasible to make it look really good out of Lexan. So if I was going to say anything, it would be something along those lines. Although that's not practical because you wouldn't just make body panel sets like that if there wasn't anything to put them on. This question kind of ties in and it says, why does nobody make a Ford Ranger body? Now, I know your username is 3.slow.ranger, but I think the main reason that they don't make a Ford Ranger body is because then you would own a Ford Ranger body. Now I'm gonna jump over to the Facebook post and go through some of those questions. This question says, how is the sale of Cisco Grove going to affect Axial Fest? That's a really good question. And for those of you that didn't know, Cisco Grove was sold just shortly after Axial Fest this year. I believe that the new owners actually were around Axial Fest you know, during the event to kind of see what was going on. Hopefully the campground will realize how many people come there and pay money to book up that entire facility for a week or better. Hopefully they see that. Hopefully they allow everything to happen as it was. I think that the attendees of Axial Fest are in general pretty respectful of the facilities. They pay their money. They, for the most part, it seems like they take care of their campsites and their trash, things like that. Hopefully nothing changes there, but you never know. But with all of that, guys, thanks for watching the Scale News. Check back every Monday if you're interested in the show. Click the like button, hit the subscribe button, notifications on, all that good stuff. Hope you had an awesome weekend, and we'll see you next Monday for another Scale News update.